what is poppin y'all welcome back to another reaction video so we are about to get to another video by the detail this one is behind the music bad by michael jackson the bad era for me is hands down my favorite era there are so many freaking classics uh dirty diana smooth criminal bad like there are so many oh but then you know what the thriller era, era was good as well you had Beat It, Human Nature, which is my favorite song, by the way. So, uh, PYT, oh my God. Damn, the Thriller era had a lot of good, like classics as well. Okay, so yeah. Um, I felt like for me, that's like when he kind of switched up the vibe because all his eras have different vibes. Like you always get something new with the different Michael Jackson eras, but damn, the Thriller era was like, it was it was really good. Tell me what, what's like, what was your favorite era, MJ era? But yeah, we're just gonna hop straight into this video because this is a long ass conversation. But without further ado guys, let's go. Strapped into an outfit of buckles, studs and zippers, Michael Jackson's bad single and accompanying music video reimagined the artist as a streetwise rock star with a fierce mm. attitude. Set within the backdrop of inner city criminality and ghetto gang violence, the video premise was designed to challenge the artist's whimsical public image. Jackson's biker boots and all black ensemble was bold and a daring move, but at the same time familiar, tapping into similar narrative motifs like that explored in Thriller's Beat It. As the second single from Jackson's studio album of the same name, the music was overshadowed by its video, and its video overshadowed by Michael Jackson's physical transformation. Having been away from the public oh, eye, Jackson revealed his new sculpted features, lightened skin as well as a whole new style and crotch-grabbing demeanor. Shocked, appalled, or mesmerized, this was the American people's first glimpse of a new era of Michael Jackson. This is the story behind the inspiration, production, and commercial reaction to one of pop history's most iconic music releases, Michael Jackson's 1987 smash hit, Bad. The Inspiration After a whirlwind of award show appearances, music video shoots, and sold-out concert performances, following the release and unparalleled success of Thriller, Michael Jackson confronted a new reality a life where he could no longer walk freely anywhere in the world without being mobbed, scrutinized, and dissected. As a result, he yep. fell into his own self-imposed isolation, effectively disappearing from public life. <clears throat> the music scene had changed significantly in the four and a half years since Thriller was released. The MTV generation bought in a new wave of gender-bending, colorful pop personalities promoting an endless array of catchy tunes. But by the late 1980s, Heavy metal was back in favor, and hip-hop was taking hold of a new generation of radio listeners. In the wake of the AIDS crisis, androgyny and ambiguity was replaced with macho aggression and explicit <laughs> sexuality, which stood at odds with Jackson's gentle, good guy image. Mm. Michael Jackson's radical transformation also posed an issue when attempting to appeal to his core fan base. For black inner-city teenagers interviewed at the time, Michael Jackson's music wasn't a problem, but his looks were another matter. He forgot his culture. He forgot where he came from. He's not black anymore. Others were disturbed by Jackson's ambiguous sexuality. Quote, he looks like a woman. He looks like his sister. He should be happy he's black, but he's wearing so much makeup he doesn't look real. He looks like a mannequin. In a calculated move, the song Bad was a clear attempt to portray an edgier, streetwise image and more aggressive masculine persona in order to stay relevant and reconnect with a dubious American black audience. Mm. The title was hip with the times, as teenagers were using the word bad to mean seriously cool. It was rebellious right. without being controversial. In a 1988 interview with Ebony Magazine, Michael Jackson said that he got the idea for the song from a true story that he had read in Time Magazine. Jackson stated that the story was about a student trying to make something of his life, who returned home to the ghetto for the Thanksgiving break. He added that the student's friend's jealousy resulted in them killing the student. However, the story he was referring to was that of Edmund Perry. But Perry was not killed by kids in his neighborhood, but by a plainclothes police officer when Perry and his brother allegedly attacked and badly beat the officer in a mugging attempt. Oh. 
shit. the production. Written and recorded by Jackson in 1986, Bad combined a strong array of soul and rock blends. The sound was typically forceful, vivid, rich, and deep. The track was originally intended to be a duet between Jackson and Prince. As Jackson's producer Quincy Jones explained, he liked the idea of drama between the two artists and pictured them battling it out in the video. Jones, who helped organize the We Are The World charity single, may have been the only person alive oh who could God. arrange a meeting between the two superstars. And that's what he did. When Prince heard the song in late 1986, he said, quote, You don't need me to be on this. It'll be a hit without me. And turned down the project. Prince wasn't big on collaborations, and appearing on Jackson's album would have been out of character Happy for him, birthday, said by Jones. The way. Prince instead submitted his song, Wouldn't You Love to Love Me, to Jackson for use on the Bad Album, but Jackson declined. However, Susanna Milvoin, a member of Prince's band and his former fiance, said Prince couldn't believe Michael had the nerve to call it I'm Bad. He was like, there's nothing badass about him. He could not let Michael get away with it. Not only was he not going to sing it with him, he went into the studio and re-recorded it to what he thought it should be and sent it back to Michael. Oh! Like, no, and by the way, this is what it should be. I think I heard that was this the before. That. But that's how Prince was. However, Wesley Snipes remembers things going down differently. Okay. During a 2017 appearance on Conan, Snipes stated that Prince was earmarked to play the lead role in the video, but after he auditioned for Jackson, the King of Pop changed his mind. Prince, Prince actually, Michael had told Prince that he had the role, and, and then he met me. Is that true? It's, this is a true story. Okay, because you just lied about your birthday, and so I don't... No, 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 this is a true story. Right. And Prince actually was, was considered the, the lead character mm -hmm. in the bad video. Right. And uh, Michael met me and then kicked Prince to the curb. Right. According to a 1997 VH1 oh, interview man. with Prince, he never auditioned and declined the collaboration due to its lyrical content. The first line of that song is, your butt is mine. Now I said, who gonna sing that to whom? Cause you sure ain't singing it to me. And I sure ain't singing it to you. So <laughs> right there we got, you know, right there we got a problem. It's interesting meeting now. Oh my In this God. same interview, Prince said there was no rivalry between himself and Michael Jackson. Like any rivalry between you and Mr. Jackson? Oh, not to me, no. That's okay. But Jackson definitely noticed the signs of hostility. And in mm -hmm. audio collected for his Moonwalker memoir, he bristled at the inevitable comparisons between them. I don't like to be compared to Prince at all, said Jackson. I have proven myself since I was real little. It's not fair. He feels like I'm his opponent. He was so rude. Mm. One of the rudest people I've ever met. Prince is very competitive. He has been very mean and nasty to my family. Ooh. With no clear account of events, the actual truth behind the rumors of this potential superstar collaboration will have to continue to be the stuff of pop music legends for years to come. The Music Video As soon as Quincy Jones heard Bad, he thought of getting his friend Martin Scorsese to direct the video. But Jackson had his heart set on George Lucas or Steven Spielberg type production. However, Jackson's image-savvy manager, Frank DeLeo, pushed Scorsese, knowing that a glossy Spielberg-type fantasy would merely further Michael's Peter Pan image. At the time, DeLeo claimed responsibility for Jackson's new look, noting that, quote, I bring a street attitude to Michael. Scorsese was working on The Color of Money when Jones called him and mm, asked for four days so of his much. time <laughs> to shoot the video. Scorsese agreed and took his crew around New York City to do the shoot during a break in filming. To accompany Michael Jackson's new streetwise attitude, he needed a new look. Gone were the sequins and colored leather jackets that defined Jackson's iconic style during the thriller period. He was on the lookout for something more daring with a harder street edge. On October 12, 1986, while driving through Hollywood's Melrose Avenue, Jackson slipped out of his limo and into the boutique Posure. <laughs> Posure was the shop for diehard punks bondage pants, spiked bracelets, studded belts, and a lot of flaps and zippers could be purchased behind the twin red doors covered with the words <laughs> parents. A massive crowd of punks always gathered out front during store hours, passing out gig flyers and handbills. Wearing a surgical mask and entering all by himself, Jackson spent a total of $334.41 purchasing wardrobe options for his upcoming video shoot. This included several pairs of pants at $40 each and a black brush denim jacket for $75. The boutique owner and clothes designer Jim O'Connor claimed that he basically designed the outfit and produced it. 
O'Connor, who estimated he'd sold a couple of hundred of the multi-buckled jacket prior to Jackson purchasing it, described his clothes as working-class fashion, as opposed to the commercially hyped stuff. Ironically, after the release of the video, O'Connor said some of his teenage customers accused him of selling out. In the video, Jackson portrays a teenager named Daryl, who has just completed a term at an expensive private school. He returns to the city and takes the subway back to his neglected neighborhood. Daryl finds his home is empty where he is greeted by his old friends. The leader of the group is Minnie Max, a then virtually unknown Wesley Snipes. At first, relations are friendly but slightly awkward. Then the situation begins to deteriorate as the gang starts to realize how much Daryl has changed. They especially notice how uncomfortable he has become with their criminal activities. Daryl takes the gang to the subway station, Hoyt Shermerhorn Streets in Brooklyn, New York, in an attempt to show his friends he is still bad by robbing an elderly man. But then, he has a change of heart at the last minute and Minnie Max chastises him, telling Daryl he's no longer bad. The video cuts to Daryl and a group of street kids dancing while he performs the song Bad. Eventually, Minnie Max accepts him and after a final handshake, leaves Daryl in peace. At the end of the video, Daryl is left alone watching his former gang walk away. The full music video for Bat ended up being an 18-minute short film written by novelist and screenwriter Richard Price, shot by Michael Chapman, and directed by Martin Scorsese. <sighs> shot in Brooklyn, the original four-day shoot extended to over a six-week period during November and December 1986. According to a close friend of Scorsese, the, the filming of Bat was me. a nightmare. Unhappy with the final outcome, Michael insisted the director to reshoot and reshoot. In his notes following the bad video, Jackson indicated that he still wasn't completely satisfied with the choreography. The moves had to be so internalized that there was no thinking whatsoever. He had to dissolve into the steps and the music until it became pure feeling. Ooh. The video's choreographers Jackson, Jeffrey Daniel, and Greg Burge were influenced by West Side Story, especially the cool sequence when designing mm -hmm. the dance routines. But they also wanted to keep the scene more contemporary and incorporated the moonwalk into the movements. Jeffrey Daniel commented, It's like a train coming across the screen, and that's the effect I was looking for. That was my favorite worked. part. Them fucking skates. Scorsese said on the challenge of directing the music video, the skates was bad. It was a different form for me. Michael was never a person who was overly enthusiastic. He was quiet, accepting. There was never any resistance, but questions. Some of the scenes were shot in Harlem, where Jackson was shaken by sights in a poverty-stricken neighborhood. I think he was overwhelmed by what he saw, Scorsese said. These tenements had, when you come in the front hall, there's an apartment in the back on the ground floor, there was an unfortunate person in there, in bed pretty much, coughing, and seemed like on his last days. Michael said, do you see what's in there? And I said, yeah, I know. He worked for him <laughs> as a performance, but his compassion for the people came I just thought through. About the meme. It was very moving. The release. Filmed in late 1986 and scheduled to be released in February 1987, Michael Jackson's new video was continuously postponed. In February 1987, Jackson took a break to shoot an $8 million extended video for his song Smooth Criminal. When this took two months, his advisors realized they had a crisis. Bad had to be completed and in stores before his tour of Japan in September that year, and a new set of Pepsi commercials were to be broadcast at the end of August incorporating music from the new album. In the end, the Bad <sighs> record cost more than $2 million and took more than two years to complete. Thriller was recorded in three months. To facilitate the release of the industry's most anticipated musical event, Frank DeLeo and CBS orchestrated a marketing and promotion blitz so grand that it was a phenomenon itself, and the single Bad was at the center of it. The music marketing event kicked off with a showing of the short film for Bath, premiering within a TV special. Michael Jackson, The Magic Returns, on CBS <laughs> during primetime on August 31, 1987. The next day, newspapers were awash with headlines concerned more about Michael Jackson's radical new image and the marketing hype surrounding him than the quality of the music itself. Barney Hoskins wrote, With his gossamer delicate, surgically sculpted features, he looked like a beautiful Latin girl trapped inside an outfit from Mad Max 2. Another claimed that Jackson clutches his crotch so many times in the video, you wonder whether the censors thought he had to go to the bathroom. However, musically, 
bad Shut received up, positive corny reviews. Ass up. Stephen Thomas Erlewine of All Music commented that Jackson's vocals sounded like he was the love child of James Brown and Mavis Staples, and added that, musically speaking, in this case, bad is very good. The single charted within the top 10 at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 on October 10, 1987, and peaked number 1 on October 24. Bad stayed at the top position for two consecutive weeks, becoming the album's second number one single and Jackson's eighth number one entry on the chart. The video won awards at various prestigious ceremonies, including favorite single, Soul R&B, at the American Music Awards. The video has been praised by critics as one of the most iconic and greatest videos of all time. Jackson's outfit has been cited as an influence on fashion and causing a shift in the perception of the artist. After Jackson's death in June 2009, Letitia James of the New York City Council began trying to convince the agency to rename the Hoyt Schermerhorn Street Station or to hang a plaque at the station in Jackson's honor. However, the request why was not. denied by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. James commented, Having Michael Jackson visit and moonwalk at this station was a huge deal, not only for Brooklyn, but all of New York in the 80s, and renaming this station in his honor would put it on the map and help ensure that people don't forget. A source from the MTA commented that no subway stations in the MTA system are named or co-named after individuals, mostly because it could confuse riders. Check out our channel for more Michael Jackson videos and also- That's an iconic, that's an iconic fucking location, like... I don't know, it feels like to be named after him or feels some type of like, um... Spray painted mural, 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 some type of like spray painted mural or something of him. Like that, that location would be so like iconic, like a tourist attraction. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That, that sounds like a good I fucking idea, but this video just shows me like why he is such an icon. The fact that he was able to like get into or like kind of like merge into the rock genre is like, so fucking iconic like it makes sense like why he has fans from different ages race sex you know what i'm saying like it all makes sense because he was able to like shift into different genres i love that about him but yeah y'all that was my reaction to this video if you guys enjoyed my reaction please make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next reaction video bye